the reliability of the data center or the hybrid environment is going to be need be driven more by meeting users' expectations of what, how they expect the network to perform, as opposed to in the past, we would tend to look at it as, hey, did I provide power to the IT rack? Right? So if you move towards a user's experience, and we put together a scorecard and some other things in the white paper to help people, um, what you start looking at is, what were the man hours of downtime that I had over the, you know, that I might have based off of uh, an analysis of my hybrid environment? And when you start looking at man hours, you start driving yourself into a much different area, as well as not only the people impact, but also what, what do they do? Um, if it's a very critical business function, then you want to build the localized data center to be much more resilient than you may have in the past. And it truly, truly becomes a highly controlled environment. Uh, similar, so take your tier three best practices that you do in your regional data center, and you need to apply those uh, uh, for these business critical functions with a lot of people dependent on it. That needs to happen regardless if it's one rack, two racks, 10 racks. It's really about what is the function of the site is what drives the level of resilience that you need to build into that localized data center. What are those best practices that you would apply into those smaller facilities? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the obvious ones are kind of like, do I have dual redundant power? Do I have uh, N plus one cooling? Do I have dual network paths? Which, you know, these are unheard of things, you know, five, 10 years ago uh, in these localized edge. So. Uh, you know, and, and those are questions that people are coming in saying, should I be building that? Which was very unusual. When we first started hearing these questions come in, we were saying, why would you ever want to do that? But when you start looking at business critical business criticality, as well as uh, the number of people being impacted at the site, you can start saying that that's a relatively small investment to make in order to take your number of hours of downtime from you know, what could be tens of thousands of man hours down to something more manageable. So uh, it's an interesting environment. The last point that's really uh, coming up too is the need for physical security. You know, uh, cybersecurity starts with physical security, and you know, in a tier three data center, I walk in and I, you know, I have to hand over my license, they, they, you know, you know, the name of my firstborn child, and they give me a card. I can walk around the data center when I'm done. I have to turn that in, and they have guards watching me all the way. But yet, if I go out to these localized edge data centers, which now have become very mission critical. You know, generally, it, it, it doesn't have that same level of control. So we're seeing people wanting to be able to, to remotely have more, t more tighter control over that data center from a physical security as well as a manageability. And uh, that's part of the reasons where you see us investing in things like micro data centers and structure on where it's our, kind of our first steps towards trying to make this uh, a better solution for the customers. Are we moving back to a kind of an availab availability versus efficiency sort of discussion? Well, yes and no. You know, I, you know, if you build, if you architect the system correctly, right, then there's really no reason for that to be the case. Now, it might cost a little bit more, but you shouldn't necessarily take a big hit on efficiency if you do it properly. And again, that's where I, we're starting to see, you know, very purpose-built data centers that are built with a specific purpose in mind, a specific application. Uh, I would, you know, my theory would be is that in the future, as time goes forward, you'll start seeing some unique solutions by, say, vertical. Right. So, you know, retail guys might tend to be similar, and they might have a one size kind of micro data center for that industry. But if you take oil and gas platforms uh, and doing remote exploration, they have much different needs. So I think you'll start seeing some of those application specific designs. And when you do that, if you design with the application in mind, that drives what we need for the IT, and you include the physical infrastructure, you can get a highly resilient system that is energy efficient.